So what compressor does is it compresses the loudest sounds to a certain level that you decide and by a certain amount that you decide. The reason why we do this is um, to bring up the level of the whole uh, sound but but not not to a point where the loudest things are just too loud. Um, it kind of compresses the the, uh, the loudest peaks um, so that it's not those loud things are just not too loud. Um, generally speaking, you don't want to do very heavy compression. Um, only just a little bit is is sufficient usually. Uh, but let me let me pull in a song that I did a while ago. Okay, I'm gonna put a compressor on here. Let me explain the buttons a little bit. Here's your gain. Normally, you're gonna put, you're gonna increase the volume with this gain, and then, and then uh, compress the the higher volumes. So that this is what it's used for. This compressor threshold is the point at which the compressor will detect where it needs to start compressing the sound. Um, this attack is telling you how fast it will start compressing the sound. This release will tell you how fast it's going to stop releasing or stop compressing after it has compressed what it needs to do. Uh, and this ratio down here is how much it's, how hard it's going to press compress and how how much it's going to compress the sound down. So if I I can make the gain zero so it's not increasing the volume at all and, and this is what we have. So this thing that's going on right here, this shows you that it's compressing it at about one decibel. If I pull down the compressor threshold, it will detect more music and it will compress more. If it's all the way up, it's just the, the threshold's too high for it to even detect sounds that are not high enough. Um, so that's the concept. Normally you're going to bring this up a little bit, anywhere from 4 to maybe 7 or 8. Um, so what it does is it just brings up the volume to a, a level that's that's a little bit louder, but it, it uh, kind of compresses the, the higher uh, volumes. Um, now you, you don't want to do something like bring this all the way up and compress it as hard as you can. Um, then you will get a very compressed sound and it, it kind of loses its um, its features um, so just I think through listening watching other tutorials and trying it yourself you're going to get a, a, a feel for the sound of what how much compression you're going to need um, RMS and peak the difference between that peak is more for high peaks like drums that have very loud uh, sounds. RMS is more of an overall compressor. Uh, a limiter is something that has a certain threshold, that's why you have a separate threshold, and it says that absolutely nothing, no matter how loud it is, is going to get louder than this limit. Um, compressors compress based on a ratio, you know, it's gonna, er, it's gonna compress, you know, so much as so much comes in, but a limiter says there's a hard ceiling and nothing's getting past this. And same thing, you don't want to bring this gain all the way up and just slap on a limiter uh, because it you, it sounds like a something that's con been compressed too hard. When when something is too loud, you get kind of a fuzziness or buzziness and uh, or distortion. And uh, so if you try and do that, that's what will happen. Okay, so we got the compressor. Um, you also have some adapt some limiters here like this one. The function is to make sure that that uh, certain um, certain volumes don't go over a certain certain point. You also have a multipressor here, and this is just a compressor that's it's kind of like four compressors that are divided into certain frequency ranges. So here you have one compressor, and it has its own uh, set of features own set of uh, numbers or levels for this range from 0 to 100 hertz you have another um, you have another um, set of, of numbers or 
levels for this compressor from 100 hertz to 520 hertz and etc cetera, etc cetera. you can change these you can move these around um, this one and the adapt and the limiter are, are things that you use more at the very end stage of your project where you're you're doing the final mix, your final mastering, and you want to check check the whole level of everything that you're working on. And that's a that's a really good tool to use. Okay. Um, you have a silver compressor, those that's just a more basic compressor than the other one. Um, it uses less memory, so if that's what you want, that that's perfect. A noise gate. Noise gates, what they do is it's kind of the opposite of a compressor because what it's trying to do is get rid of little noises at the bottom end of the of the volume spectrum. So on the threshold, you tell it where to go, where you want it to detect these lower noises or the no lower sounds, and anything below that decibel reading will be cut off by this much. You can say 100 dB, you're going to cut it off by, you know, 20, 30 dB. Uh, the reason why you want this is, um, for example, if you record in a certain situation where there's a bunch of noise, maybe it's your air conditioner, maybe it is, uh, I don't know, people in the background or air going through the mics or something, um, you get that little um, low volume noise. And if you want to cut that out, you use the noise gate. So it will let all the louder uh, volume levels above this threshold point come through but it'll cut off the lower um, volume levels below this level that you choose and decide. Okay, the next one we have is EQ. You can get to it from channel EQ or you can get to it from double clicking right here. It's the same thing. I don't use any, I've never used any of the other EQs. I'm not sure exactly how they have certain characteristics, but this one has been used, has been just fine so far. Press the analyzer, you can see all this is is a frequency um, analyzer where you can see the, see the frequencies and you can augment or take away certain frequencies by a certain amount. Clicking and dragging, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options to take away or to augment these frequencies. Um, and just kind of like the compressor, it it just takes some time to learn um, learn uh, how how to get the sound that you're you're hearing in professional uh, recordings. And you just have to read up on some of the tricks that they that they have. Um, there are some general rules that are online that you can read up about. Uh, the reason why you want to do this, for example, let's say you have a bass, drums, and piano, and vocals uh, in your song. Um, by taking away some frequencies and augmenting some other frequencies, you highlight the good things about this particular instruments, and you take away some of the parts of the instruments of the sound that are not as important. Um, for example, if you're uh, one common thing is just to EQ uh, the snare. Normally, you, you'll you'll augment the sound of the snare, the 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 pop of the snare around here about 2,000, 1,000 uh, hertz. Um, but you'll also cut and you'll get rid of some of the frequencies around 500 hertz because there are frequencies that come from a snare around 500 hertz that sound kind of boxy and those boxy sounds are kind of make it sound more muddy and you don't need that so by doing that you kind of define the snare and you clean it up same thing with the with the bass drum uh, around here you'll you'll probably augment it to make it more punchy but then you'll get rid of some of the boxiness down here and you'll augment some of the the bass thump part around 200 hertz uh, so that's how you kind of shape and define and, and get a better fit so that all the frequencies, all the instruments have a certain uh, more specific and special place in the frequency range where they can sit and you don't have a bunch of instruments trying to fit in the same frequency range. Okay, so this is your EQ. Now we'll talk about this later on, but you can automate this. You can, by pressing this button, going back and forth, this and move this. By pressing this one, 
see how all these buttons uh, manually change these features you can automate this just like you automate with with volume you can automate all these buttons on all these effects and we'll talk about that uh, towards the end okay the next one is a filter here you have an auto filter this is just like a generic filter that you can use uh, it's got all the ADSR for the filter um, capabilities you have a cutoff a resonance and you have some LFOs you also have um, a fuzz wah. this is kinda like for 60s kinda stuff <laughs> Uh, tool to have your little fuzz wah. Um, you also have some evoc filter bank and uh, evoc track oscillator. Uh, these are kind of for similar to the um, the vox box that we saw earlier. Um, so that's that's what it's used for. Um, now, there are things called the flanger, the phaser, and the ring shifter. These things are, let me show you a good example of that in real life. see how that sound is kind of going in and out the whoosh, whoosh, that sound is going in and out that is because of either a ring shifter phaser or, or flanger here's the sound of, of it with a ring shifter so here's with the flanger and they're all a little bit different it's kind of hard to describe but here they are it's using an LFO to kind of fade in and fade out some of these effects. So that's what they do. Let, let me just play this once again. You can hear it again. going on.